So if you've just won the lottery or taken out a bank loan, or maybe you're swimming in money like Scrooge McDuck, and you've just bought yourself a brand new Apple MacBook M1 in 2021 or early 2022, you probably want to know how to get your money's worth out of it. Well, that's what this video is all about. I'm going to give you guys 10 things that you should know straight off the bat to get the most out of your brand new Mac. So number one is a tool that I'm actually using to make this video that you're watching. So check this out. Command Shift 5 brings up your screenshot options. Now you can screenshot the entire screen, you can screenshot a folder within the screen, and you can screenshot a customized part of the screen, and you can also capture the entire screen in a video format. Now if you're in a lot of online meetings, and maybe you're dozing off mid-meeting and you want to find out what people were saying in the meeting, you could record it using this tool. So it's very useful. What I'm going to do though is record the entire screen, not just a selected portion of the screen, so that I can show you guys what I'm doing on the computer as I'm going through the settings and stuff. So let's do that now. Click that, click record, and there we go. The screen now is being recorded. Now, tip number two. So some of you might be coming over from Windows like I did way back in 2015. And the tips I'm gonna show you guys today are gonna to be extremely useful for you if you are jumping ship, because a lot of them are things that I wish someone had told me way back in 2015. Anyway, check this one out. If you're used to right clicking on icons on the desktop and files to bring up the options, it's different on Mac. You actually push two fingers down on a folder or a file or a program to bring up the options. But if you can't get out of that habit of right clicking on things, you can set it up here on the trackpad if you want. And this is how you do it. So you go to the top left corner, go to system preferences. Here you want to go to trackpad and here where it says secondary click, you use the drop down menu and you can customize the bottom right corner of your trackpad to be your right click. So if we do that, now whenever we right click in the bottom right corner, it brings up the options just like a Windows PC. That could be very useful for you if you just cannot shake the right click. Tip number three, rein in your iCloud. So if you've just bought yourself a brand new Mac, all is well and good and it will be for quite a while until one day you'll get a message from Apple saying, hey, you know that iCloud thing that's been running on your computer since the beginning? Well, yeah, that's nearly full and we're gonna need you to go ahead and uh, give us some more money for some more iCloud. Because what's actually been happening is it's been backing up all your files and folders and photos and loads of other stuff to the iCloud. What you need to do on day one is customize actually what it's doing. So this is how you do that. So you go to your Apple logo, top left corner again, go to system preferences again. And from here, you wanna to go to internet accounts, click on that. And then on this page, you can actually link multiple different accounts if you want to, but the one we're looking at today is iCloud. So we click on iCloud on the left-hand side and you can see here, all of the boxes that are ticked are being backed up to the iCloud. The one that's gonna take up the most storage is this one here, the iCloud drive at the top. So if you hit options here, these are the things that are actually on your computer that are gonna be backed up. And this one here, desktop and documents folders, those are the killers. Those are the ones that are gonna take up the most amount of space, especially if you've got more than one Apple Mac. So have a look at this menu, think wisely about what you want backed up and what you don't want backed up. I do recommend on ticking desktop and document folders, unless it's absolutely necessary for you. I think the better way to do this to make sure you don't fill up that drive too quickly and get that message too early is to back things up manually when the time is right for you. So I was using my 2015 MacBook for years without doing this. And to be honest, I probably should have done this on day one, but nobody told me, but I'm gonna tell you. So this little bar across the bottom here has a bunch of stuff by default and some of this stuff you might never need. For example, Apple Music, if you're using Deezer or Tidal, you might wanna get rid of this, and this is how you do it. So you can either do the two finger tap or the right click, whatever you set up, go to options, and you can remove it from the dock. It's super easy to do. And what I recommend you do with the dock is have the apps that you use the most. So you can see on my one here, I've got Premiere, Photoshop, Audition, and Lightroom. Those aren't there as standard. And those are things that I use every time I use this computer. So what you want to think about is what do you need on the dock? So go through these, remove the things you don't need. For example, Apple TV, I don't need that. Get rid of that. Then what we can do is go to the launch pad, which is here on the dock, click that. And here are all the apps. If there's anything here that you think you will use a lot, then it's worth dragging it down onto the dock. For example, let's say calculator, let's bring that down. 
drag that onto the dock. Now it's there. I can bring that up whenever I want. Spend some time, make sure you customize that dock so you can fine tune your usage of your MacBook. And don't worry about deleting things because they will always be there in the launch pad unless you fully uninstall them. And here's a little ninja tip for you guys. This is something I just personally like and it's something that's not on as default. If you double click or right click on an empty bit on the dock, you can go to dock preferences. Here, you can switch on a feature that I really like and I don't know why they turned it off, but this magnification, tick that. Now, when you go to your dock, everything will be magnified as you run across it. This is an awesome effect. Definitely recommend switching this one on. And here's number five, use stacks. Now stacks should be automatically on if you've got the latest software on your Mac, but this is how you can manually switch it on, switch it off and customize it. So on your desktop, what you can do is either two finger tap or right click, whatever you set up, go to use stacks. And you can see here, there's a little tick next to it, meaning that it is on. Now what stacks will do is take similar files and put them into stacks. For example, on my desktop, you can see images. If I click that, you can see I've got two thumbnails here all stacked up. If I take some other images, let's take some out of this folder, for example, put them on the desktop. Now all of those images are in the stack. When I click the stack, it opens it up, expands it so you can see everything. When I hit the arrow, it closes it back down. This is just a really, really good way of organizing your desktop on your Mac. And you can go a bit further with this as well and you could really use this to improve your workflow. If you right click or two finger tap on the desktop, go to group stacks by, you can customize how these are organized. So you can put them into groups of shared by, date, last open, date added, date modified, date created and tags. Trust me, this tool is very useful. I do recommend you play around with it. I kind of like the kind setup. So all my photos are in one place, all my PSDs are in one place when they're on the desktop. So the reason you probably bought a MacBook and not an iMac is because you want to take it around with you maybe on holiday, to school, to uni, to do work on while you're on the go. Now, one of the downsides to having such a big, beautiful screen on a laptop is battery power. So you need to use it efficiently so you're not draining the power all the time. And this tool is gonna to help you do that. So check this one out. Hit the Apple logo, top corner, system preferences like before. Here, we wanna to go to desktop and screensaver. Click on that. And then here, we wanna to go to screensaver. And then on this page, you can choose your screensaver. Of course, I've gone with the drift one, but this is what we wanna look at, hot corners. This is important. Click on this. What you can now do is when you slide your mouse into one of these corners, it can perform an action. I do recommend you stay away from the top left corner because as you've seen in this video, quite often I go to that little Apple logo in the top left corner. Take it from me, you can definitely hit that top left corner by accident on many occasions. So I always leave that one blank, but check this out. What you can now do is with the top right corner, we can choose, I've got start screensaver in the top right corner. So whenever I go up here, the screensaver automatically starts. In the bottom right corner, I've got put display to sleep. So this is a great way to save power on the go. When you're not using the screen, you can put it to sleep so it's not using any power. That trick right there is gonna be very handy. And then the bottom left corner, I've got quick notes. So whenever I go down here, I can take a note very quickly just by dragging my mouse to the bottom left corner. Super useful, definitely do this. Customize your hot corners. Here's number seven, it's the three finger drag. Now this one is not something I use that much, but it's been very popular amongst other people in the Apple community. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. And I'll show you why some people choose to do it as well. So right now, in order to drag things around on the desktop, what you do is just grab it, push down quite forcefully with your finger, and then you can move the windows around. I personally don't have a problem doing this, but there is a way to do it with less resistance. So check this out. Go back to the Apple logo, top left corner. Come back to system preferences. Here you wanna to go to accessibility. In here, you wanna to go to pointer control. Click on that. And you can adjust the speed and everything of the pointer. But what I wanna show you is the trackpad options, which are here. And here where it says enable dragging, if you click that, what you can now do is set this to three finger drag. 
And what this allows you to do is use three fingers to drag things around instead of pushing quite forcefully with one finger. So check this out, just click on the top of the window you're using and three fingers will move that around. It kind of is a little bit easier. Let me know what you think about this one. Number eight, embrace the darkness. Going back to what I said about using hot corners to save battery power by turning the screen off. Well, this kind of is similar to that. It's not going to save as much power, but it will save power and it will be better for your eyes. And that is turning on the dark mode. This is how you do it. Go to that top left corner. You probably see now why I told you not to set up the top left corner as a hot corner. Go to system preferences, go to general. Here in general, you will see at the top of the screen, light mode, dark mode and auto. If you set it to auto, in the daytime it's gonna be in light mode, at night it's gonna be in dark mode. That's quite nice, it's a nice effect to have. If you're stuck in a room all day and there's no sunlight, it might give you an idea of what time it is, so that could be useful. But anyway, I always have it on dark mode just because whenever there's black on the screen, it's gonna use less power than when there's bright areas of the screen. And there's gonna be way more bright areas of the screen when you're in light mode. So switch on dark mode, I recommend it, but it's entirely up to you. And the other thing I recommend you do, this really is just a side note, is to customize your wallpaper because loads of people are buying Apple Macs. You wanna kind of make it your own and there's some cool features here on the wallpapers. So all you do to open up the menu is do the two finger tap or the right click, whatever you set up. Go to change desktop background. This will open up your options for background. And these ones at the top, the dynamic ones, these are the cool ones. The ones with the cloud, I haven't downloaded yet, but these ones here, what they will do is you can set them to dynamic. So what that means is as time is ticking over throughout the day, the background's gonna change. The sunlight's gonna pass across it until it becomes nighttime. Again, like I said before, if you're stuck in a library or in the middle of a building somewhere where there's no sunlight, this wallpaper will give you some kind of indication as to what it's like outside. So I do think it's a good thing. So definitely do that. So number nine is one of the reasons I jumped over from Windows in the first place. It's the security side of things. I just got tired of having to have third party antivirus and all this kind of stuff going on, pop-ups and all this nightmare. One of the greatest things about Mac computers is you get very little of that. But anyway, check this out. Your brand new MacBook has got a fingerprint reader built in. No face ID yet, but a fingerprint reader is here. And what I recommend you do is set up more fingerprints because you'll only set up one when you set it up the first time. Let's say you're holding a pen like this, you could use maybe this finger here to unlock it or one of your other fingers or maybe even your left hand. So this is how you set up more fingerprints. I do recommend you probably do all of your right hand seeing as how the fingerprint reader is on the right side of the keyboard. So check this out, top left corner again, system preferences. And here where it says touch ID, click on that. And here you can go to add fingerprint. Once you click that, it'll ask you for your password, put your password in, scan your other finger. Now you can use multiple fingers to unlock your Mac. And check this out, here's another really cool feature. If you have an Apple Watch, which I don't, so I can't really show you it in practice, but I can show you how to set it up. Come back to system preferences here, go to security and privacy. Now, once you're in this folder, if you have an Apple Watch, you'll have a tick box here that says, unlock Mac with Apple Watch. So literally, when your watch is close to your Mac, you can use it to unlock it instead of using the fingerprint or typing in your password. That could be very useful for you. I do recommend you set that up if you have an Apple Watch, but make sure it's connected to the same Apple ID as a computer, otherwise it won't work. You probably bought your MacBook so you could be more productive on the go. And trust me, one thing that's gonna stifle your productivity is notifications from hundreds of different sources. Trust me, I know how distracting these things can be. Here's how you switch them up. So hit the Apple logo, top left corner, system preferences. This must be becoming very familiar to you now. But here, where it says notifications and focus, click on that. And then down the left side here are all the things that are gonna send you notifications. Go through them one by one and decide what things you wanna get notifications from and what things you absolutely don't wanna get notifications from. So think wisely before you switch things off, but definitely go through these. The other thing I recommend you set up here is focus. So let's say you know you're gonna be at uni or college at school from a certain time of the day. What you can do is set up times of the day where no notifications will come through at all. Use this wisely. You don't wanna miss some important emails and stuff that you've been waiting for. 
So be mindful about your choices here. So I wanna take this opportunity to thank you for getting all the way to number 10. Here's a bonus ninja tip for you just for making it this far. This is something that's a bit harder to find and not many people know about. So, so up here where the Apple logo is, when you hit Finder, you have all of these settings, file, edit, view, go, window, help. Help is very useful. Definitely use that if you're stuck. But check this out. This is how you access the secret settings and hidden menus within your Mac. So when you're hovering over one of these, for example, file, if you hold down options, you'll see it expands a little bit and it gives you some other options. So if we go to edit, hold that down, you can see I can do things that weren't there before. Hold options, you can see group stacks or sort stacks. But here on go, if we hit options, you can see we can bring up the library. This is something that's kind of hidden away within the computer. This is where a lot of files are kept that you don't really have easy access to. So this could be useful if you're an advanced user. And one of the shortcuts here, which I find personally very useful, it's not as advanced as some of the other stuff you can do with it, but when you go to file and hit options, you'll notice you have this, close all. So if you have loads of files and folders open, like loads of Windows and Adobe Premiere and Photoshop and Safari and Deezer and your VPN, you've got all of these things running in the background. Normally what you do to close them all down is I've just shut the computer down entirely or close them down one by one. Using this option, you can shut them all down just by holding options and then going to close all. And then of course, you've got the shortcuts as well. So if you learn this shortcut, which is command option and W, you can do it without even going into that secret settings and menus. And I was gonna show you guys all the different gestures and stuff for the trackpad, but I think there's thousands of videos out there that already do that, so there's no point in me doing it. I really do appreciate you guys for watching this far into the video. If you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. Really appreciate your support, and I will see you in the next one. Don't be late.